you think that the show is going to influence the books? Do you think R.R. R. Martin is looking at the fan response to what the show is doing and he knows what direction not to go in that? Yeah, I think he's used it totally as a, as yeah. a beta release. I'm just going to deep back beta. Yeah. <laughs> HBO's beta testing this story. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> um, the, more, the more recent seasons really have upset me a lot because it, it, a lot of the storylines don't mean anything anymore. Like the brand up in the north storyline i always actually hated that storyline yeah um, and it's been such a long time talking about it and then it's gone nowhere mm-hmm. he's just literally sat as a mm-hmm. as a heroin junkie in the corner and just okay so out. the episode three was the attack on winterfell how do you think it should have been done differently specifically bran what should have his role been we should have seen him <clears throat> actually walking into a different mm-hmm. when he just says i'm gonna go now and he just put his eyes back yeah. we should have then cut to Either uh, snow uh, running with forward, the Dothraki, yeah. yeah, running forward the Dothraki, or going into <clears throat> one of the dragons. Yes, I thought for sure he was going to go into a dragon. What a missed opportunity! I know. I I thought in the very beginning of the show when they first introduced Warging, uh, I thought that his character arc was going to end with him. Uh, becoming friends with one of the giants, that one surviving giant yeah. who like you fought in the Battle of the Bastards. I thought him and Bran would become best friends, and the way that it was going to work is that Bran just hangs out in the castle, and the giant goes uh, stomping. Yeah, goes stomping, and Bran takes him over. Yeah. But then, since he's really intelligent, he's got Bran control, and he's wearing armor and stuff, and he's got yeah, yeah. actual weapons, and then he'd be unstoppable. Yeah, a bit like what he was doing with Hodor. Yeah, a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Yeah, Hodor used functionally is pretty devastating. Yeah. Um, you know, well, I think that was in Series 3 where there was one bit where he walked into Hodor and Hodor just destroyed the... Uh, he picked up uh, that mercenary guy and yeah, broke his neck. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> nearly just pulled his head off. Yeah, just destroyed them. And, and that, that makes you think, well, you know, uh, Hodor never really was, uh, was a smart kid anyway. Mm-hmm. He was always too big and clumsy. And then, but with Bran have, having control like a puppet master, would have made sense. Him now walking into anything. Apparently, the Starks all could walk. The books they can all all walk. I remember hearing that. Yeah, they all can go into their their particular their their um, direwolves, and so they can control their direwolves. And that was part of the reason why um, they screwed um, Rob's head onto onto his shoulders after the uh, uh, mid wedding. Because he had been, he was known as like the, the wolf of the north. That was part of the thing was they had to kill both because they thought he might still come back after them. So that's why <laughs> they killed the dog. But that's that, a good point. None of the none of none of the story really pointed into into that. They totally abandoned this mystical part of the. Uh, so of the Starks in the book, can they do that right from the beginning? Like yes, from yeah, page yeah. one, all the Starks can do it. Yes. That's an incredibly. That's an incredible power. What, what is? Uh, it comes from when they get the direwolves. Okay. So when they're given the direwolves, the direwolves seem to imprint themselves on them. I don't know whether it's the. So it's dire- not like previous to that. Uh, yeah, I don't think oh, they okay. had previous. And then, um, but Bran had the strongest connection to everyone. He always could walk into the tree. The, the gods were trees, and I wish those trees were some. I wish they were more functional, man. I do. I, I wish they, trees with faces with bleeding eyes is yeah. such a cool idea, man. And they don't do anything. I know. <laughs> it's so upsetting. I know. Literally, you would you would you would love them to be able to move or fucking like, do anything. You know, Lightning from their eyes. I don't care. Anything. Just it's not like you you look at the tree and it's fine and then something crazy happens over here and then you look back and the tree's moved and it's over here next to you and like, <laughs> <laughs> like the uh, weeping angels yeah, from literally like, yeah exactly like the weeping <laughs> angels but, but not where's the fucking tree come from <laughs> yeah but like they, they get the best view of the whole situation and that's, mm. that's how the three-eyed ravens meant to be collecting the information about everywhere that's happened um, but they should have done it a lot more. They should have used the CGI to pump these trees into every situation. You know when they went down and saw Lyanna and the tower and that swordsman fighting yeah. Ned Stark Which back in the past? Which infuriates me. There should have been a weirwood tree there. Yeah. That should have been, this should have been the whole reason that uh, the Three-Eyed Raven is so powerful is because he has these trees that create a network that basically are like a CCTV network. <laughs> but completely conspicuous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, is that tree with eyes looking at me? <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. All right. Uh, 
Welcome back, everybody, to another Bullshit in Video Games. We have a special guest, Simon, today. Say hello, Simon. Hello, everyone. Glad to have you on, man. Yeah, good to be here. Uh, weather out here is a bit uh, rubbish. It's been raining a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, Wuhan. Yeah, it's going to get warmer. It might it might rain for the next five days, or it might be 110 degrees tomorrow. Who knows? Yeah. Or it might snow. Yeah. We literally, it's shooting crap out here with, uh, with what we've got to plan for the weather. You know, the yeah. trousers or overcoats or shorts yeah. and t-shirts and flip-flops. It's just... Well, where you're from is famous for great weather, right? Oh, well, it's literally famous for having weather in the same, uh, all the seasons weather in one day. Yeah. yeah. You know, literally, you wake up and it's snowing and in the after- middle of the afternoon, you're in 25 degrees, burning sunshine, and then it's foggy and cold and miserable and rainy in the afternoon. Gotta keep you on your toes, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's exciting. Well, it's good to have somebody who actually read the books, someone who's fairly literate here to bounce some ideas off of. So you've how many have you read? You've I've read uh, two of the books at the moment. Um, there's five of them in total. Uh, yes, I've been. Uh, I can't remember the titles off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't have any context for it anyway. Yeah. Uh, so you read the first two. So in the books that you've read, what's going on with Bran? What's the, what's the official story? Uh, the official story with Bran is that uh, he ends up being crippled right from the start, um, mm. and it's a about his journey to become functional, really. That was how I viewed the whole of the, the start of um, the book story and the, the TV show followed on from that. They were like, he's now on a period of discovery to find out actually what is his worth to his family anymore. Um, At the end of the second book, has he done anything yet? Uh, no, he's still traveling before to get to the... Um, uh, he's got, gone through the wall. He hasn't yet found okay. the three-eyed raven. So is he with those two other children? Yeah, yeah, he's with um, Jojen and um, Mira? his sister, Mira. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I was wondering if those were book characters or they were just TV show characters because they're worthless in the show. Yeah. I hope that they do something more in the book. Uh, well, they're, they're a lot more uh, sort of a companionship, really. They, they are much more of a protector of Bran. Okay, it's um, not just expedition? Yeah, it's just um, <laughs> there seems to be a much more of a strong connection between uh, Bran and uh, Jojen and... and Another, I don't, I don't know if they say he's a warder in the book or whether they just have a, a psychic connection. It's... Uh, do you think there's any characters from the book that are used a lot better in the book than they are in the show? Uh, well, I, I certainly think Rob Stark had a much more powerful um, uh, role, as did the Baratheon family. The Baratheon family just seemed to get wiped out. In the show, in yeah. In the show. Um, Absolutely. And they were a much stronger family. And legitimately so. They really... They are, the Starks are all about honour, but are very stupid. The Lannisters are all about power, but are very ruthless. Targaryens are uh, power crazy. Mm-hmm. Or the um, Baratheons. And the Baratheons were like a middling ground of the, of the lot. You know? Okay. Um, Robert Baratheon, when he first took over as king, he was an incredible swordsman. He was an incredible fighter. Well, he used a giant hammer, right? Yeah, giant yeah. Two-handed yeah. hammer. Yeah. War, ha- uh, war hammer. That's yeah. epic. Yeah. I wish that we could get more flashbacks. Yeah. Um, I would love to see him fighting the Targaryen. I think that's one of the things that uh, the um, HBO are going to do as one of their equal series, really, for the... How do you think there's going to be branching series from this for years and years to come? I do. Yes, yeah. I think this is. They, they've spent a lot of money on this, and they've also recuperated a lot of, of money. Of course. Um, and they know there is there is an appetite now in mainstream culture for this type of storyline. Yeah. And which I think is why so many people are so angry with the season eight, mm-hmm. um, because it's it's too much filling um, fan theories. It's literally like one of us being surprised yeah. here. Like Clegane right? Bull. Yeah, Come exactly. On. Like she doesn't even kill Cer- he doesn't even kill Cersei. She walks right by him. Yeah, yeah. But all it takes is like a backhand. He has a knife on her, just a yeah. stab and then goes back to fighting yeah, the yeah. hound. Doesn't he just lets her walk by. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I know. And uh mm-hmm. and the the fight scene wasn't even any good. No, it wasn't. Um you I wanted some real earth shattering things. I wanted them literally the dragons are destroying the building. I wanted them to make more damage with their damn swords. You know, yeah, literally yeah. be taking the walls out, taking the staircases out, jumping around, and you know, a bit more, a bit more of a fight. I think they totally nerfed um, uh, the mountain too much by making him a zombie. He needed to retain more of his initial killer instinct. You know, okay. when when he just before he fought uh, um, Prince Oberon, 
in, in the game uh, where he was just ripping people apart and just mm-hmm. slamming them into the walls that was that was what they sort of he was still strong but he just lost he lost some of the threat yes uh, okay he did just uh, slam um, the guy who's taking a piss the, yeah, yeah. Uh, like the homeless guy <laughs> that See, I think the demonstrations of strength for the mountain, the zombie mountain, always upset me. Because where we really needed to see him was on a battlefield, swinging a giant two-handed sword. It doesn't mean anything to me that he killed some drunk peasant in in an alleyway. Yeah. And like, what the hell is he doing there? He's he's the most conspicuous person on earth. He doesn't sneak around. No. He's the only eight-foot-tall knight. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So it's... um... And and they they built they built the character up so well, you know. The, the, all through all of the seasons, one, two, he was he was on screen. You know, they had the big fight with the uh, with the hound in season one uh, from the tournament day where he nearly took off um, the horse's took, head. Uh, took off yeah the hound's head with, uh, when the hound uh, decided to take the knee in front right, of yeah. the uh, uh, the king. Otherwise, his head was clean off of his shoulders. And before that, he cut off his horse's head with yeah, one yeah, swipe. Yeah. So that's what I needed to see when they when they established the zombie. Uh, mountain uh, that was during the what were they called the crazy religious people yes yeah the the, um, uh, the night the seven something yeah, yeah, servants the seven, of the seven the, something the, like the that the of the seven or something like that yeah, yeah. whatever we need to see yeah. him go straight to the chapel and obliterate 50 of these guys yes that's what we should see especially since they're not wearing armor or anything so HBO could have just shown him like you know just splitting people from shoulder to hip yeah like, sh- sh- just cutting through them but they wanted to show the the, the Cersei escape part, um, which was fine. But then, when Cersei arrived, she should have collapsed into the arms of uh, of the uh, Meister pa- Meister um, uh, Pycelle. No, no, uh, 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 Quiburn. 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 Yeah. Quiburn. Um, Who and, also died ridiculously in yeah. the last episode. <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> she should have just like. Given the nod to the mountain, and the mountain just walked back, yeah. and just killed everyone along the line. <laughs> yeah, just, just walked right, right back through the city, obliterating everybody. everybody. Yeah, yeah, I would have, I would have loved that. Yeah, that would have been in line with his character. It would have been po- totally in line with his character. Totally and in line with well. his character. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they they literally just okay. I, I I know he wouldn't have been able to take out all of the major characters, but he could certainly have taken out a few of the others. I know he took took on that nun at the end of the season. Um, the nun that was going shame, shame, yeah. shame, and she died a horrible death. I'm yeah, sure. He like, <laughs> it was very vague. Yeah. He probably like murder raped her. Yeah. Yeah. It was probably some cannibalism. Uh, Who knows? Who knows what zombies yeah. do? <laughs> do you think that zombie uh, Clegane will come in the books? The I think the zombie Clegane is actually the. Part of them trying to take some of the storyline from the Lady Stoneheart. Lady Stoneheart is Catherine Stark's reanimated corpse. Reanimated corpse. I yeah. didn't know that. Okay. So um, after the Red Wedding, um, where she had the next thing, river, they actually find um, she appears out of the river later in the books, um, and they have this same river, the same situation where they find Lady Stoneheart. Um, but um, the uh, the hound is there in the books and they at this river and this they have they film the same scene in the storyline in the TV series but the hound has a piss into the river so it's literally like the, the writers are saying look we know this is a popular storyline but we're gonna piss all over it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I always wonder why the story writers for the show. Don't just use all the material. It would allow them to make a longer show, longer seasons, make more money theoretically. I I, I can't answer that. They, yeah, they, I don't know. I think they they must they must be storybooking some of this stuff and seeing how some some storylines play out um, with the test audience and, and some others that don't play out with the test audience or don't score highly, and then they they write it off. I think that's how they did the first seasons. And it worked well because there wasn't such the hype, there wasn't such the pressure, um, so there was a lot less um, emphasis on on uh, on their decisions. Now, as it went beyond the books on certain storylines, they then suddenly had to try and keep secret. There wasn't any need for secrecy before because they were following the books that had been out for ten. But changing to 
new storylines, new arcs, and not trying to spoil the TV show for people, they then just closed ranks with a number of writers. I think they probably had like six writers in a room that were just not why the the storyline doesn't really flow. You know, normally with a with a TV series, as I understand it, is you have teams of writers. You have a team of writers who create the main arc. You have a team of writers who are doing the language within that arc, the, the, the discussions of the characters. And then there's another one, a team that basically look at this and then uh, like the opposing AI that's with a lot of systems down, and literally they just pick faults. That's fine, that's fine. Okay, mm. do this better. Okay, and then that's, that's how they then come to a consensus of a storyline that makes sense and doesn't have so many plot holes. But because they just cut the team down so little, uh, to such a small bare bones, it appears like they've made lots of uh, lots of these different um, con- continuity errors. There's there's no uh, consistency of story arc anymore. You know, take um, the Jamie Lannister's arc. Is he had a normal arc, and now he's gone full circle <laughs> in <laughs> one episode. Battle, battle fucking season. Yeah, yeah, that is infuriating. So it, yeah, so the, you think the story writers just got in over their head, or maybe they're just sick of it? They're just sick of it. I think they're yeah. literally they're, they're like, right, um, this is this is the general consensus of what the fans are saying is online. This is, makes a little bit of sense. Um, we want to get onto Star Wars, so let's just let's just hand our homework in. What they want to go on to Star Wars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. D and D to Star Wars. Is that an actual thing? Yeah. What, the, in what way? What are they going to do? Ah, uh, I. I believe they're, they're doing some of the, the next ones in the uh, in the uh, movies or TV show. Um, I believe it's going to be standalone movies. Hopefully, I'll get sick of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, with movies, it's it's okay. You can you can you, you just give yourself a couple of years into it and then yeah, move um, on. Yes, this definitely. one, this one is. For them, it's 15 years worth of work. <laughs> That's been going on for 15 years? Well, yeah. From when they started the pre-production. Wow. So it's about, this is season eight, and each one was a year and a half between the filmings. Wow. A long yeah, time. yeah, you're right. Yeah, that is a fucking long time. It yeah. goes by quickly for the audience. Yeah, it does go by very quickly for the audience, uh, but for the... Um, for them, I bet it's all-consuming. It's all-consuming and just took took too much of their life so I'm not not surprised that they literally got a bit of burnout out of this but it's a shame it's like almost like well, they they should have been almost thinking about the ending before they got to the uh, before they started the books they needed to know where they were going to get to but they had faith that uh, George Martin was going to release more release books. his books at the same pace that he was and he hadn't he just didn't so what, what is his release cycle because I haven't looked into it but it sounds awful uh, like well, how many years is it between each book uh, well, before it was fine it was like one every two years oh, okay. which is a, is a standard release schedule and he was like it actually sounds pretty fast yeah and he was he was doing reasonably well um, they were they were on schedule the first five books came out on uh on a nice timetable um, and then they started making the filming before he released I think he released the fifth book they were filming a season and all I can think is they just they took away a bit of his fun there yeah and yeah, so he slowed down he, he just I think he just had a bit of a massive wobbly for a few years <laughs> wobbly I love that term <laughs> <laughs> just didn't want to complete <laughs> do you think it's possible he's just sitting on it um, yeah, I, I think he's. I think he now has the A scripts. I think he's he's done. He has done. He just didn't want to release. While this now is on, uh, either contractually, contractually, he is obliged not to destroy what they're trying to do with the with the TV show. So he had to sit on it, mm. or he just decided that he wanted to use them as a different, uh, as a beta test to work out some ideas and see how the visualization worked, and then. Work out actually, I want some of these ideas, but actually, I'm going to make it much more complex and mean a lot more. They cut, they cut too much of the of the meaning of this story away because at the moment it's pretty bleak. the uh, The overarching storyline is you basically can't escape. Well, there's no character growth from the start of the book till the end of the book. <laughs> if you're honourable at the start of the book, you're honourable at the end, but you're on the losing side. <laughs> 
if you're a horrible person and have horrible children, you're still a horrible person at the end of the book and have had no redeeming features whatsoever. Do the horrible people win usually? Uh, in Game of Thrones, they always seem to never get the situation that, you know, she didn't uh, take Cersei and Jenny. She didn't suffer at all mm-hmm. in, in her death. Nope, not at all. Know, it literally was instant. It was being crushed by boulders. Yeah. Yeah, and being embraced by her brother. Yeah, the, the, the love of a life. That was yeah. the most romantic story if I had finished. You could have written it. It was literally like Titanic, yeah. just on a TV show. Um, the, t- the two lovers embracing as they, as they both uh, meet their doom. It was, it was incredibly romantic. Um, and look, at, look at the other hero- heroics. So take, go back to The Red Wedding. Where that was meant to be a romantic setting, and it turned into an absolute bloodbath. Yes. Um, there was no, there was no, no uh, good ending for those guys. That was incredible stuff. Yeah, yeah. Was it? Was the red wedding in the books written as in the, in the same way as the yes, TV show? Yes, pretty much. They 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 nailed that that adaptation very well. Okay. So, R. R. Martin's been writing this series for a very long time, right? Yes. What, how popular was the series before the books? Before the show, I should say. Uh, it, was, it was reasonably well known within uh, the mm-hmm. sci fi fantasy um, genre. Okay. Um, which is why it was picked up. Now it's like bigger than Harry Potter, though. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. I would, I would say that it's definitely trying uh, on into, into popular, popular culture mindset now, um, in a similar way that Harry Potter did. Mm-hmm. Same way as Lord of the Rings did before that, or Star Wars or Star Trek. Now in that same frame, uh, it's m- much better law, uh, law and world building than uh, the Twilight worlds were. Mm-hmm. So the, well, Martin seems to really care about the quality of what he puts out. Yes, um, he he's he's had many interviews where he actually says he has his own nerd, uh, a guy that is so obsessed by his world building <laughs> that he will throw ideas past them to see if they are consistent <laughs> with. <laughs> an expert yeah yeah. Uh, like Blizzard Entertainment does that for World of Warcraft yeah. they, they have some super nerds in the community that they run their ideas past to make sure that it flows with the universe yeah yeah imagine doing that imagine creating something that's so big and compli- complex that you don't understand it yourself yeah, yeah. You, you need somebody that just is all obsessed by this one world uh-huh. and they, they live in this world it's in their head all the time and they're and, and from the viewer's perspective because yeah. the world from Martin's head is a completely different world yes he, of course he's, cre- yeah. he's the creator whereas if yeah. you're living in it and you're experiencing it from a voyeuristic point of view then it's a totally different experience you're, you're imagining it, you might be describing somebody in a certain way but you're imagining it in a different way based on usually your own life experiences mm-hmm. um, the face that you put to your characters inside your own head as you read is usually based on people you probably know and relate to the traits that are coming through the book mm-hmm. to that person yeah absolutely I know a lot of giant zombies yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you probably know a lot of giants <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if R.R. Martin's sick of it as well. I would. Uh, it's like a, a really popular band, and they always have to play that that one song that everyone loves, and they have to play that song for thirty years. Yeah, you know. I think he's probably tired of answering questions about it. Not only because I think he, he finished the book a long time ago, so he's now like, why didn't you talk about my other series? I want to make money off them now. <laughs> okay, so that's that was my next question. So, one, he obviously has to write things aside from Game of Thrones. Yes. And two, does he write other books in the Game of Thrones universe that are not related to the, the, the current overarching story? story? Um, I, I, <clears throat> actually, I don't have an answer to that. I've not, not looked into uh, George Martin's book that deeply beyond... So, A Song of Ice Fire is the name for the whole series? Saga, yeah, the whole okay. saga. And how many books is it supposed to be complete? Uh, I think seven in total. Okay, so we're right about there. You yeah. know, when when the show ends, he's probably going to release the last two over yeah. the course of like two years. And then. I, I, I think he might do an accelerated timeline. He might even release a double head. Two at the same time? Yeah, I think he's done them both. Yeah, he probably still doesn't give a shit at this point. And I bet he's richest. Fuck, too hot. Yeah. Uh, I bet the show brought in crazy, like, new levels of money. Mm. And so now he's looking at a property in New Zealand. Yeah. And he, he's, you know, he's just trying to 
seclude. I bet he's gonna buy like a uh, a little like Hobbit, Hobbit home. <laughs> <laughs> Contact with some Japanese company and have them build a robotic dragon for him. I think mean, he's he's definitely going to want to get into writing movies now. And the, the scale and the epicness of this TV show has shown that you can write for the big screen as well. Absolutely. I, I think it's way easier to write for a movie than for a book. Yeah. Especially when you're going for military realism, which he always is, and he's going for biological realism. I, I watched yeah. the video where he was explaining why his dragons... Are biologically consistent. Yes. Um, or white vans as they actually are because they have legs. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, dragons traditionally don't have legs. White vans have legs. Oh. Can you out by a bit of the same. Well, I remember a video where he was explaining why <clears throat> his dragons only have two legs and they, they only have wings in the front. Yeah. It's because there's no winged animals on Earth that have four legs and wings. Yes. And you know, the, the wing is an extension of their leg. Yeah. So, do you think he'll stay in the? He, he writes sci-fi as well, right? Uh, yes. Um, do you think like that's his his passion? Do you, do you think like he's a tortured soul and he actually doesn't even enjoy the fantasy, <laughs> but that's so popular? <laughs> that would that would be a horrible situation <laughs> yeah. to be in. Right? Hilariously tragic, which yeah. is which is pretty normal for life. Yeah. All he wants to do is write about his robots on Mars. Yeah. But he's not allowed. No to. one, no one will allow him to do. Everyone that. Everyone wants fucking White Walkers and giants yeah. and dragons. Well, so how long before the TV show did you read the books? Um, so I I read the books, I read the books probably two years before the TV uh, show, and I, I bought I bought them I bought together. Um, the third one was just coming out just before the TV show. Did they make audio book form? Uh, they do now. Okay, yeah, I definitely gotta get the audio book. I'm barely literate, so. You put some giant thousand page tone in front of me. I'm like, fuck this. Yeah. You know, it's a uh, better chance of me becoming a doctor than reading this book. I, m- I remember the, the beginning of book two was very slow going. Yeah. That's why you put the audiobook setting on 1.5 speed. <laughs> <laughs> Cruise through all that padding. <clears throat> um. I would quite like to see him when he um when he's going to write in in the sci fi channel. Um, I've just uh, started watching uh, the Expanse. I don't know if you've seen the uh, Sounds familiar. Yeah. So, the Expanse um, is uh it's, it's also uh, an adaptation of books. Um, it's a it's a sci fi, it's set in the future. Set uh, Is part of the story like this crystalline goo or whatever that like infects people and then that like they become it like absorbs light? It absorbs en- energy or I've, something like that, and, and potentially I don't, I've only seen oh, like episode shit, that, one. That just ruined a whole bunch of yeah, shit for you. Yeah, you may have done. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. <laughs> Ep- episode one has some weird thing happening in this ship, and this man is like half into into some some sort of reaction or thing. So that he, could exactly he's like stuck to the wall or something. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like purple or green or Pur- whatever. Yeah, purple and it's like blacky, kind of crystalline yeah. looking. Well, yeah, it's it's. It's like in a disaster movie, so the lighting is not great. You can't really see what you're seeing, okay. but you just see someone right. being like munched by something, and you don't know if it's animal or mineral or. Right. Well, animal. I didn't. I didn't ruin it for you. It's or, in the first and, episode. And, then, and, then, and, then, and the, <laughs> the, the lady that was still alive was screaming. Um, and then for some reason, I've just watched episode two of this, um, and uh, this. Um, Ice ship, uh, the Canterbury or the Can- yes, it goes. is the show I watched. Okay, right. I didn't watch all of it. I think I just watched the first season. Is there only one season? Uh, this season three, so I've managed oh, okay. to just download just all of them. All of that, um, and I'm I'm already I'm already sucked into it. It's um, mm-hmm. after two episodes, I I feel that this is really going to accelerate and be one of one of my top favorite shows. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's got that uh, sort of firefly aesthetic. Yes, exactly. And why do people love that aesthetic so much? And the I think very specifically the, the aesthetic is like sort of like, like a mint. <laughs> sort of, or of like, like a broken down yeah, view yeah. of future. Yes. It's like when things were initially released, you know, they came out of the factory, they're great. Yeah. But it's just like my iPhone now yeah. and the battery is going a bit. It's just like this chair. Yeah. Four of the five wheels have broken off and I'm still sitting on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's still functional, but yeah. it's not as good as it should. It still be. holds me upright every yeah. now and then. I almost fall over. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you think Firefly will come back? I would love Firefly to come back. Yeah, I know, me too. Season one and then the film Serenity. Right. 
standing is a good word for it. Do you think that they would have run into the same problem though? If it, if Firefly was in its eighth season, would it be shit? Probably. A bit Probably. like The Walking Dead. Yeah. <laughs> the Walking Dead is also another TV Atrocious show. Atrocious TV show. The first yeah. season was great. Yeah. I think everything after that was unwatchable. Yeah. It's it certainly got worse and worse and worse. There's there's this uh this meme at the moment which is a picture of a horse. I don't mm. know if lots of people have seen this meme. It's specifically about Game of Thrones. Okay. So they got like season one to four is like a oh, very yeah. nice drawn picture of a horse. <laughs> yeah. Then the middle line is like an art student's version of a horse in the middle from uh five to uh Five six. to six, but then there's a little slither of six that is like really is high rendering, high render, perfect photograph. Because <laughs> the, the end of season six was like, wow, this is really setting up the story. And then seven is getting off to a bit, and then it's a it's a toddler drawing. Yeah, it's like a stick figure at the end. Yeah, it's just it's what was the end of six? Was that the chapel exploding? Yes, I believe so. Okay. I, um, I, I, either that was either the end of seven was the chapel exploding. Uh, the end of seven was the wall coming down. Yes, yes, it was yeah. all coming down. So it must have been. So six must have been the chapel exploding. Yeah, I actually thought six was shit up until that. Yeah, until that. Well, I think that episode. that entire episode was. That's the reason why it was done as like a high render because that one episode it was is, pretty badass. It was astounding. It yeah. was. It, it really uh, went back to the uh, back to the idea of what they'd already built and established, like in season uh, season five or four, five, I think, where they had. The Mountain versus the Viper episode. Or mm-hmm. Do you wish Dawn was more involved? Dawn, the, the place where the Viper uh, came from? Yes. Dorn, I should Dorn, say. Right? Yeah, yeah. Dorn, yeah, Dorn, yeah. I do. I think they missed a massive trick on that. The, the, um, they have this um, badass guy with a massive stick with an axe on it or a big curved like, scythe. Oh, body. yeah, like a... Uh, and a bodyguard guy. And uh, he was meant like to a be... Naginata, yeah. the Japanese Naginata. Yeah. Yeah, and he got killed so easily. Yeah, he just a tiny knife in the back. Eh, I'm dead now. I know. Well, it's actually in the books. He was a badass. He was, he was supposed he, to be one of the greatest he, fighters in the yeah, world, right? Yeah. So, like, I, I watched a, a fan theory video that was talking about when Jamie gets caught by Brian and he and she, she's taken away. Yeah. And he mentions that there's maybe three men in the world who could defeat him. But a lot of people think that he's one of those guys that he's mentioning. Yeah. Him and um, who was the leader of the the. Kingsguard at that point? Uh, uh, Barris and Selmy? Yes. So him, Barris and Selmy, and no one knows who the third guy was. No one's so sure of that. Um, well, probably Euron. I was probably going about Euron. Euron came very close. Well, he did. They, they killed each other. Yeah, but he didn't even have his right hand. I know. <laughs> So, I don't know. I think Jamie without his right hand is like one of the worst fighters in the book all of a sudden yeah. in the show. And you're on. I've always hated his character. I, I've hated the character in the TV show, but in, he's the, book, better in the book, the book he's uh, he's. I've been told because he hasn't come into the into the um, into the scene. My brother has read, read all the books, and he's told me that uh, that Euron was was one of his favorite. Telepathic. Yeah, he yeah. literally knows where he needs to be to. Maximally fuck up somebody's story. Oh, really? He's like he's like the bogeyman. He comes up and pops up at every worst situation. You know, if if there was, they if, sort of do that in the show where he just happens to be around know, every yeah, corner. Yeah, exactly. But they don't explain that he's telepathic no. at all. Yeah, he, yeah. He, they, they explain it like he's just lucky. Yeah, which is annoying. Yeah, it's <laughs> incredibly annoying. He's like the world's luckiest person, but in the books, it's literally like he's supernatural. Okay. Okay, so that has that gives me two points that I want to ask you. One, are the Ironborn as worthless in the books as they are in the show? Because they seem utterly worthless as a people yeah. and as warriors, as everything. They're supposed to be so kick ass, yes. and they're completely worthless. The, the, they have another another um, group of people that have just just sort of been done over by the show because the show is so overarching. Mm-hmm. There's such a lot of threads to be weaved that. It just allowed some of these sideline weave characters to just fade away. Um, you know, I, I feel they were done a massive disservice because they were even more ruthless than the phrase were. But everyone thinks the phrase were this really horrible thing because of what they did in the Red Wedding. Yeah. But um, the uh, the Ironborn, um, when they took over Winterfell, uh, was was meant to be, they were they were meant to have been as bad as Ramsay, the okay. Bolters. Okay, and my second point is 
with uh, with Euron and the Iron uh, Iron. What are they called? Iron Fleet. Iron Fleet. It, so you haven't gone to the Iron Fleet part in the books no, yet. No. So are the Ironborn just sitting on their island doing nothing? In Basically, the books? yeah, yeah. Well, then they're, they're, they're just they're they're quite happy to let other people fight their own battles on the land because they rule the seas. So mm-hmm. as soon as anything goes onto water, they're like they're piracy. They're total all yeah. about it. But take it seems like no one has a reason to go to water. No, no, there's no there's no real reason to go to the water over that side of the island. You know, it's almost like they need to they need to be marauding through the, the straits between Essos and Westeros. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's where all the trade route, that's where the elephants are, that's where they could have been stealing all the money from Bravos. And, yeah, yeah. That's another thing I wish they did different with the Golden Company. When I first introduced the Golden Company in season eight, I thought that the Golden Company were gonna turn on Cersei and that's how she was gonna lose. Yeah. I thought that like uh, Sir Davos would be sent to uh, Bravos to talk to the Iron Bank and be yeah. like, "Look, my queen has fucking dragons and Unsullied and Dothraki, and we just beat the fucking White Walkers and shit. We can't be stopped." Yeah. So you're sending the Golden Company to them, but the Golden Company are actually working for us, and they're going to turn and kill Cersei when they get there. Of course, that would have made so much more sense yeah. than, than what happened to. And Cersei because had they already were... paid off her debts, so yeah. they had no reason to follow her. The only reason they would have wanted to follow her is because they thought he she would win. Yeah. And. That was basically they were just trying to set up this idea that she was she was an equal to them, but she never was an equal. No, as you saw, this episode was even quicker than the uh, the long night of Winterfell. And yeah. The long night of Winterfell was well, quite a short. <laughs> Point <laughs> like about forty five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's just so many things about the show that fucking upset me now. Yeah. See, I, I I know why they chose Winterfell as the battle point, mm-hmm. um, but I think that should have been a, a mitigated disaster. Yes, I agree. I would have preferred the Night King just won if everyone died. If Arya escapes and Danny escapes, Arya sneaks away using her sneaky sneak, her sneak one hundred skill, yeah. and Danny just gets away on one surviving dragon. Uh, um, picks up John and they they yeah. they hightail it to the Eyrie or somewhere like or that. to her island. What's or, her Dragonstone? Um, yeah, yeah, Dragonstone Island. Yeah. yeah, and then for the next, they lose the, they lose the north. They literally lose everything. Yeah. And then for the next couple of episodes, the Night King obliterates the rest of Westeros. Yeah, and then the season ends with uh, Danny and John on Dragonstone with whatever servants were still yeah. on Dragonstone. And then maybe it can cut away to leaders of the world and other parts of the world getting the news that Westeros has been dominated by the undead. Yeah. And, and that then, would have been a f- yeah, fantastic episode. Exactly. And that sets up, you know, next epi- you know, seasons yeah. of shows and bullshit. Yeah. Extended you know, world. Because they've already lost <laughs> High Valyria to the, uh, to the stone men. Okay, yeah. The, the, uh, the thing that uh, Jorah had to yeah. be... So, they they used this world is used to having large successful parts of the entire world get ta- just get yeah, yeah just get taken out of the hands of um, people of the boring. people who own it. And yeah. I think that should have, that should have absolutely happened, and then it would have been winter has come. Yes, and literally the whole thing about winter is coming and all, all of this the, the the whole Stark philosophy this would have all then made sense. I feel that the fact that they managed to kill the Night King was was incredibly easy. If they needed the plot armor to be this thick to get everybody to come out and let Arya have this moment, right? But it's come too early. I don't. I don't know why they insisted to have the White Walker death be like a death in the middle of the season and not the final boss. They wanted the final boss to be man versus man. And I don't understand. This has never really been about man versus man. The whole thing's been about ice and fire. Yeah, I completely agree. So why have they then gone to uh, the Lannisters, who who have just they've just been a thorn in the side. They've been the, they've been the big bad at every season, but they've never been a magical big bad. They've just been ruthless and uh, always just managed to be cunning to on top but I feel that that would have been a much stronger message is if their cunning had run out in the face of a massive horde of undead mm-hmm. and, the, and then that would have been a legitimate ending for, for her entire character arc and the fighting should have been two full, two full episodes yeah. there should have been an episode of 
like harassment tactics from the yeah. Dothraki, harassing the army as it goes, and the Dothraki are covered by the two dragons. Yeah. So the Night King can't get involved, otherwise it would be two versus one. Yeah. <clears throat> and then by the time they get to the castle, you have a reason to say, okay, all the Dothraki are dead. But yes. they killed a large portion of the undead yeah. on the way. And then when you get there... But then, and then the Dothraki army are on with the Night King. Mm-hmm. And it's the reverse. Yeah. And we actually see the Dothraki full paced on the field towards the castle mm-hmm. as the dead. Yes. Because at the moment, they just they just fell on the ground. And then, then, and then, then when the Night King did his rise, we didn't see the Dothraki dead rise. We did see a couple of them. Yeah, but it's, like uh, the scene where the Jorah is defeating. Yeah, uh, they're, all, they're all left. Yeah, 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 true. They we don't see undead horses. horses. That would have been awesome. We also don't see animals. Yes. All right. We don't see undead direwolves. We don't see undead mammoths. We don't see, see undead any of that bears, shit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There literally. should have been. There should have been thousands of those in the army. Yeah. This the CGI budgets. I think is what led them down. Yeah. And I think it's because they didn't have enough episodes. If they had had two full seasons of this mm-hmm. to go, they would have had a bigger budget. They would have had at least double, maybe triple the budget, and they could have done this. Because they, they clearly they spent the budget on the dragons flying over King's Landing. Now we know that this has happened. Sorry if anyone's not up to date with the, uh, <laughs> yeah. the episodes. Massive spoilers. I'll put that in the description <laughs> of the video. <laughs> but God knows when this will come out. But. Yeah. <laughs> As you can see here, I'm at 94%. That was a podcast filmed almost a month ago. It's been right. uploading for five days. Right. Fucking Chinese internet. <laughs> but anyway, <coughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I enjoyed that she destroyed the city. Yes. I like that. I think that, that was, that was, everyone's saying, oh, it's never been, um, been telegraphed that she's going to be the Mad King and she's never done anything crazy. She has. Yeah, I think it was telegraphed. I think it was, it was said well over and over again that yeah. the Targaryens go crazy. Yeah. When they get the closer they get to the phone, the crazier they get. Mm-hmm. That's, I honestly think in the next episode, Arya is going to kill Dan. Yeah, well, it's already been forecast. The uh, the thing is, you're close brown eyes, you're close blue eyes, you're green eyes. Cersei didn't have green eyes. Dan. Danny has green eyes. Danny's meant to have like purple eyes in the book, but oh, she's really? got green eyes like in the show. Wait, close eyes. Yeah, I know that means yeah. kill, but was that like a prophecy? Yeah, well, I think one of. Um, that's what the, the um, um, Melisandre well, said. That? Yeah. You'll close eyes. Yeah, that yeah. sounds familiar. Yeah. yeah. Is that a book thing? No. Okay. I think they, uh, they, uh, they okay. massively uprise. At this point now, anytime I hear something that sounds like good writing, I'm like, that must be the book, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, that can't be these jackasses. There, there, the were, there were some fantastic for, uh, for prophecies in the book okay. that they have just missed off totally. They've got um, uh, Alon Haha, I think is one of the ones, which is the guy, the, the prince that's promised. I think he's Wait, the, uh, Alon, Alon Ahai or whatever yeah, it's yeah, called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's supposed to be John, right? It's meant to be John because he pulled the burning sword out of its hard home and killed the White Walker at the time. So that's already been done. He had a burning sword at Hardcore? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know when he pulled the Valerian steel out of the out of the fire, it was on fire when he went and had to uh, fought the, the White Walker general and killed the first White Walker. Oh, okay. The difference with the White Walker is they are humans that are turned. Yeah. So they're alive when they turn, that's why they end up white walker blue. Whereas yeah. the The Whites are the different. whites are different, they're dead. They yeah. are the rays dead. So. Does it upset you that we didn't see any White Walkers fighting in the Winterfell battle? I know. We should have seen heroes versus White Walkers yes. all over the place. Yeah. And that would have been a perfect excuse to kill off some heroes. Yes. But also also kill off some White Walkers. Yeah. Because the the heroes all had either they had their Valyrian steel or they had, or they had the dragon glass. Yeah. Both of those things have been proven to be able to kill the White Walkers. Would the Dragon Glass kill the uh, Night King? Hmm? Would the Dragon Glass kill a Night King? No. No. It had to be the Valerian Steel, and it had to be in the same spot that the the Children of the Forest put the initial Dragon Glass. Dragon Glass. Hmm. So the Night King originally was a weapon from the Children of the Forest. Well, yeah. To um, use against the First Men. Um. That's what's been implied, but I've also seen something that, that actually the the Night King was there to just keep the the Three Eyed Raven locked away, hmm. and that now the Three Eyed Raven has escaped. Well, wait, what do you mean by locked away? Because he was he was trapped already uh, in the tree. Was, he was trapped in the tree, and then so when, he wasn't before the Night King. Um, I assume the Night King was like his jailer. I think that was the whole point. They created him to keep the. Um, the Three-Eyed Raven as and the, actually we're going to find out that all along the Three-Eyed Raven is the bad person interesting 
I like that idea. I like the idea because Trey Raven pisses me off. Yeah. yeah. At the moment, they, they've done nothing with the storyline. And the only way that, and the only character art that um, that D and D seem to see is to be able to mess with expectations. And expectation is Bran is the hero. Expectation is Danny was the hero, but Danny, after the last lesson, appears to be a megalomaniac, big bad, and the psycho, story yeah. psycho that's been created, and we've still seen nothing about Bran. And Bran has just done nothing this whole season. He's almost done nothing the whole. Thing. Hold the whole episode, so the whole literally, series, yeah. and he was the he was the big shock in the first episode, being pushed out of the window in the first episode. Also being pushed out in the books was a big shock. Yeah. You know, who does that to a child? Lannisters. Yeah, well, the Lannisters. But his storyline started right at the beginning, and it's got to a point where he's, he got to be the Three Eyed Raven, and then it's just stopped. It doesn't even seem like the Three Eyed Raven has any real power. Yeah. But we're going to find out maybe he is all powerful. That actually, he is the master puppet master, and he's just been walking into everybody. And every time someone has done something that was out of their character, but to drive the situation to a predetermined thing that he wanted done. So, one of the ideas is he walked into the dragon, the one that uh, uh, Danny was on. And actually, she didn't go crazy. She was just holding on for dear life while the dragons were burning the shit Kills out again. Killed everybody. Maybe and he was into the Night King, and he came and walked into the Godswood. Well, so, some of the things, some of the other things, other ones, which doesn't fit with that one, is that he is the Night King. Hmm. Actually, they're two halves of the same dominant species, and if the Night King had actually touched him, they would have combined and then been mixed up. A bit like fusion dance. Yeah. <laughs> I heard a, a theory on a fan video uh, it was based on the books not the show that the White Walkers might actually just be a completely different race a different species like yeah. they're not human because in the books they still haven't said anything about the Night Walkers yeah. really, right? no they, 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 um, they're not they, the Night King is a total fabrication from the from D&D oh really from the story yeah they have they have um, they have this um Big Other or the Great Other in the books. I know that they give reference to this Great Other, um, who could be the Night King, or the, the leader of the of the White Walkers, but who knows? But there are White Walkers. Though, yes. Right? Yeah. Wait, okay, okay. Yeah. So there's definitely there's definitely there's, there's leaders of the, of the of the undead. Yes. Okay. Um, and they are they are most definitely ice. Made of ice. Yeah. Something that upset me is. All the stories that we heard in the first season, the second season, and usually they were from like that old lady talking yeah, to yeah, Bran, yeah. and she would be like listing off all the terrible things in the world. She always talked about ice spiders yeah. and how they rode ice spiders. Yeah, and, and then we they didn't, we didn't, we didn't get any. them. Yeah. Didn't and also we had the elephants who promised. Yeah, and then they they cut that, and it's purely uh, it's just it's gone out. Budget. It's big. It's just real disappointing. All right. So, how do you feel about the magic system in in uh, in yeah, the books and the TV show? And so uh, soft. Yes. It's so soft. It's a, it's overwhelming. Soft. Yeah. Some people seem to be overpowered with magic, and, and others yeah. are magic sensitive, and then others just have no clue that there is even any magic in the world. Yeah. And people who are overpowered with magic, their magic only works sometimes when it's yeah. plot convenient. Yeah. Like um. So the red priests, were, says, yeah, yeah, and the other guy. Oh, um, Forrest and the yeah, yeah, the yeah. drunk. Yeah, uh, both of them have incredible power. Yes. So where do these red priests come from, and why the fuck aren't there more of them if they're that powerful? Uh, their their origin story has not been described. They just say okay. that we are we follow the Lord of Light. What what kind, what city are they from? Mir, Marine, um, or something like that. Yeah, so I think they're over the river. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know the, the red priestess was incredibly powerful. Like she had this enchanted necklace, and she was she basically was ancient. immortal. Yeah, they made her immortal. Ridiculously powerful. Yeah, and then um, she takes the necklace off, and she gets aged. Oh yeah, and she summoned that 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 demon from her yeah. vagina. Did that happen in the books? Uh, I think so. Yes, I think there was Shit. a blood blood magic that was used on that. That's extreme power. Yeah. So like, if uh, just talking about like practically. Um, if you saw somebody commit magic, 
you would immediately go try to learn that magic. Yes. Who wouldn't? Of course. Like, why would you spend 20 years learning how to use a sword when you can, like, summon ghost demons? Who have a thousand swords and just cut yeah. their enemies to pieces. Like, like, yeah, they blood swords. Because when he stabbed the, uh, the Baratheon guy, the sword then turned into blood. Yeah, yeah. Fucking... <laughs> everyone would have that. Yeah. Or what about the... the um, the Temple of Shadow or whatever it was, the the place where Danny was like imprisoned by uh, uh, Arya. I mean Arya, the uh, no, no. The, the house of Dark. Uh, Danny, when the the people who stole her dragon, the people oh, who yes, have magic. Oh yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, the house of uh, the Undying, the house yeah. of the Undying. Yeah. So they had really powerful magic. The guy was yeah. able to clone himself and cut everyone's throat at the same time. Yes. And he was like immortal. Uh, Dora stabbed him and he just fell into clothes. Yeah. And he appeared again. So what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I know, and they, they didn't even mention any of that. And I, I assume that's a very similar setup to the, the where Arya was with the, 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 the faceless men, the house, the yeah. black and white faceless men house. Um, I assume it was a very similar type of magic. That story arc was annoying. Yeah. I wonder how direct that is from the books. I certainly think she has. She would have gone on a certain journey to get turn her from a scared kid into a badass assassin. yes certainly and this is one way of doing it and magic is the only way because she's like excellent less than two fish <laughs> I don't know what that means <laughs> oh, the, 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 the quote wasn't it that um, uh, what's his name from the, from the show uh, the uh, the wildling guy um, Crazy one. Uh, Torment. Torment. Giant's Bane. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah he's, he describes uh, Jon Snow as uh, oh, weighs less, less than, than two, two fleas. Fleas fucking, yeah. yeah, two fleas fucking. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Dude, his I love that guy. He's, yeah. he's so good. I love his story about uh, about um, killing a giant and then yeah. being breastfed because his mum thought he was the baby of the giant. Yeah. Dude, George R. R. Martin should put that make that, that game. That, that is that was brilliant. I it think was. that was. I I I. I I think that read so true that I think that directly came from Bud Martin gave that to. So do you think he's on the set like with the directors? I think I think he suddenly had a sit down and before they started the thing and he said, "Look, I'm not going to tell you exactly what how you get there, but I'm going to tell you a few things that I want this story to get to. Mm I'm going to tell you the ending, and I'm going to tell you some bits that I want I want to be in there." And I think that hot. I think he told them that one anecdote about uh, Tormund, the wildling, doing with the giant, and that's why they then created that whole whole episode was pretty much character driven dialogue. Yeah. And I think it just came from that one idea. Mm-hmm. They decided right, how do we make this work into a storyline yeah. of a build up before war, and and how do we make that feel realistic to the viewer. And I, that, I think, was the nugget that they grew that whole episode out of. And that, that's my favourite episode of this season, mm-hmm. by far. Yeah, mine's good, I think. The battles are, are great as a spectacle, but the story doesn't really hang together. But this whole anticipation and nervousness before a war that they thought... They, literally, they thought they had no chance of this. And that's why everyone was so furious about episode three, is because literally no one of any importance died. Yeah, exactly. They, like I think does do the showrunners actually think we care about Jorah? Yeah. Do you think we actually care about anyone else that died? I can't even remember who died. Well, Ed, Ed, the uh, the guy from the 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 wall. Oh yeah, that guy. <laughs> who gives a, a shit? He's <laughs> the minor of the most minor characters. And um and uh uh, Reek. Reek, yeah. Yeah, Theon. Who gives a shit? You know, but uh, of course, his, his death was telegraphed. He he had no reason to be there. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to go there just to fight for the honor of Winterfell. As soon as he said that, it was instant. Oh, yeah, you're dying. You're fucked. You're dying. This is the end of your thing. And Jorah also had come to the end of his usefulness. Um, and uh, the one death I did like in that thing was when the little girl killed the dragon. And if you've watched that in China, that entire season. Kill the uh, killed the dragon? Killed the giant. Yeah, yeah, I love that as yeah. well. Yeah. But it's been cut, totally yeah, cut yeah, in the, the Chinese. Chinese version. Yeah. yeah, the Chinese version cut that. So. Leanna Mormon, right? Yeah, yeah, that was a perfect end for her character. Yeah. When she gets batted away, I was like, "Oh fuck!" Yeah, because like you know, she's tiny and she gets backhanded by a giant. Right. I'm like, yeah. "Oh shit, she's fucked!" And then she's like all broken and fucked up, and she yeah. gets up and charges him. Yeah, great. I think she was already dead at that point, mm-hmm. and literally she just found some strength to some adrenaline strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, just definitely carry. already mortal wounded. Yeah, 
the magic system is so soft, and I think that probably one of the best characteristics, I haven't read the books, but based on the first couple seasons, and people say that they're faithfully adaptive, I think R.R. Martin supports the very soft magic system with a very hard physical reality. Yeah. And, and like, all the battles, all of the the logistics of everything has to work perfectly in his mind, and then that can justify a very soft magic system. Yeah. I, th- I, th- I think he's never wanted the, the turn of any major s- major battle, really, to have just relied on luck or magic. Yeah, because a wizard did it. Yeah. yeah. Fucking Gandalf bullshit. Yeah, I, I think I think that's how, what he had in his mind all the time. He was like, this situation would have gone this way anyway without the magic. Yeah. I think um, the... Uh, uh, Renly Baratheon would have died without the magic, and this would have would have destroyed him eventually. Okay. Yeah. You know that everything that happened it just was an accelerator. The magic has just been used as an accelerator to get to a point that would have happened naturally. And then, of course, then there's a, the bit where this the plot armor, and this this is when people had no real problem with plot armor because um, the Lords of Light could bring people back that were needed in the plot in the future. Everyone that was brought back, you then knew had invincible plot armor. Yeah, you know, they had to do something important later yeah. on. John being brought back had to be very important. Kill the Night King. Oh yeah. no! <laughs> or um, or the uh, who was the, the king that kept getting brought back by Forrest and Mer. Oh no, um, uh, uh, Beric Dondarrion. Yeah, he he was important because he had to save Arya, uh-huh. who would kill the Night King. Yeah. But I feel that they overplayed that. I still think this battle at Winterfell was the wrong place. I think the battle at Winterfell should have happened. And as we said, we said earlier, it should have been an unmitigated disaster. Yes. It should have been a disaster. It should have been an absolute annihilation. Okay. But it shouldn't have been done in the way that they did it. The, the, the reason a lot of people uh, did not like the way the military was portrayed in this was because George R. R. Martin had such a passion for the military and all the other things. Mm. The Battle of the Blackwater was incredibly well done. The yeah. Battle of the Bastards was very highly... No, it wasn't. <laughs> it, it was, it, compared to the Battle of the Winterfell. Oh yeah, of course. Compared to that, anything is good. Compared yeah. to Battle of Winterfell, fucking Dragon Ball Z beam, yeah. beam battles are better. Yeah. Uh, I thought the Battle of the Bastards was oh, shockingly bad. It was shockingly bad. Like, Have you ever seen like the Three Kingdoms movies? Like the ancient China movies, no, they they uh, they take like military realism and they just throw that shit out the window, and, right. and like troops are doing the most ludicrous formations and like everything. Yeah, it, it gets to like flying tiger, hidden dragon um, levels, and I thought Battle of Bastards was similar to that, right. where the formations were absurd. All of a sudden, there's like a twenty foot wall of corpses that they're using as like a it, it was so it's a crush. Yeah, it, it killed me. It killed yeah. me. I, I quite like I quite like that idea was that they they literally managed to env- envelop the the army and the, it it that is a that's a full on army oh, fight. Yeah, yeah. So and, like envelopment isn't a problem to me. Like a twenty foot wall of corpse is a problem. A giant being totally ineffective with and you know not giving a giant a weapon is yeah. a problem to me. Uh, fucking completely abandoning your entire battle strategy because your stupid uh, little, little, brother, little brother runs out into the field. Yeah, and doesn't zig. Yeah, right. When he should have zagged. It's... Doesn't zig or zag at all. Just yeah. runs in a straight line. Yeah. Fuck. Oh, yeah, that upset me about the bastards. Yeah. That, that, that bit about Rickon running forward straight away. Because apparently he was, he was, because he was very young when he was, when the, um, the Ironborn sacked Winterfell. He went and lived in the wild. He was meant to, meant to be in the books. He's like a, he's even wilder than um, Arya is. Oh yeah. So that his street smarts should have told him that he doesn't run in a fucking straight line. <laughs> so literally, again, just abandoning the uh, abandoning the character of the of the person in the in the event just to, just to make a, a spectacle. I'm so tired of improbable victories for the good guys. Yeah. It, it goes all the way back to the first battle at the wall. Where uh, who's the the wildling king? Um, uh, oh, uh, Mance Raider. Mance Raider attacks with a hundred thousand men, and they have like what a hundred guys defending the wall. Yeah, I mean that battle should have been over in minutes. Yeah. It should have been over immediately. 
the the but the, the wall also had like a big magic scythe that came out. I remember seeing that. At oh some yeah, point. yeah, like and a, then, a big like yeah thing yeah. swinging across. Yeah, and then that never appeared when the when the wall came down. That yeah. wasn't. Uh, there should have been. Should have been the big scythe came down and took out a whole bunch of. Them. Also, if Manx already. If he already predicts that they only have men guarding that part of the wall and there's like a thousand miles of wall, just send men up the wall, all, all along okay. the wall. Yeah. You'll have tens of thousands of men on the other side of the wall with the, within, the, within the next couple yeah. of days. And they're not going to have those magic scythes the entire bit of the... Of the yeah, well, it wasn't mm-hmm. even magic. I think it was just a piece, it was like a piece of metal just on a chain, right? Oh, Swinging yeah. across. Yeah, so they're not going to create that at every single point of the, of the mountain. <sighs> Man. So it, why are they attacking at the strongest point of the... And they just throw away the Giants right off the yeah. bat. I hate that the Giants don't have more organization. Yeah. Okay, so how about this? Do you think, like, the hard R fantasy is going to become a huge thing now after Game of Thrones because Game of Thrones is so successful? Do you think that it's become mainstream yet? And do you think it's because of our generation? I think that it's because of our generation that it's become mm-hmm. mainstream. Um Certainly, a generation that loves these comic book heroes. It comic loves, books, cartoons, anime, his, yeah, Japanese anime. Loves a sense of um, of just suspended disbelief. Yeah, and yeah. and sensational, fantastic things. Yeah. Um, and that's I I think that's I think that's just because predominantly a lot of us have grown up in peace. Yes, absolutely. I think our previous generations their their parents grew up in war time. Yes. Certainly. The, uh, the guy the from the uh, Lord of the Rings, Tolkien, he fought on the yeah. on Western Front. Yeah, that and and that's what that's what was his inspiration for yeah. orcs for the yeah. invention of orcs. The German stormtroopers. Yeah, pretty fucking grim. So grim the, as fuck. we we had we had this escapism come in from this these horrors, and then those stories have been told to our parents or or to us, mm-hmm. and so now we. We've grown up on these stories, and now they are added into our psyche. These are these are not new story. These are new stories to humanity. Really, Superman was not known before. Yes. China has had their story of the Monkey King for a long time. I don't know how that has impacted on their psyche. Do you think that there's any way for our generation to actually appreciate how horrible war is? Uh, certainly, I think that the uh, the military um, we've had we had people go, uh, certainly in the UK we had people go to Falklands and they explored this guerrilla warfare type situations where mm-hmm. it was basically running terrorism battles, um, horrible burns and things like that happening at close quarters and just yeah. basically a, a, a horror nightmare. Um, come back with a PTSD. Um, but, but it's certainly not to the situation where you just had not on a level of like World War One. Yeah, like you just had the the the, the yeah. entire villages of people going. And yes, multiple generations yeah. of nations yeah. disappearing. Yeah. You know, like you go into a village and every man, his father, and and all the sons are all dead. Yeah. It it could happen again, but not in the same way. I think if it uh, if it does happen that you're losing entire villages and towns, it's because someone has let off a weapon on them. Well, By the capacity that yeah. it takes. Or it's like an attritional weapon, like yeah. an EMP or something like that, yeah. and then you just let you know thirty percent of the population starve to death. Yeah. That's a, a thought experiment I do with my students while I ask them what would happen if food stopped coming to Wuhan today. Yeah. Because uh we, I teach American history, right. and when we cover World War One, I, I do like an entire class. Like I do ninety minute lectures. I do an entire class where I just try to drill into their mind how horrible World War One is, and I kind of ignore yeah. America for that class. And then usually toward the end of the class, uh, I want them to think about like how easily things can go badly. And yeah. then I'm like, what would happen if food stopped coming to Wuhan today? It's Fifteen million people. Yeah. I'm like, how many days would go by before someone would kill you for the food that you have? You know. And they're all twenty years old. I'm like, none of you have children. You know, how likely would the guy down the street with a with like a five year old daughter to feed? How likely would he kill you for something to feed his daughter? Yeah. And all our students think about it for the second. They're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, that doesn't sound doesn't sound very good. When I first got here, um, uh, there was some news that hit the hit the the, the WeChat tab about um, a price of lugamien got increased in the uh, the customer. Bond. 
Weights with the, uh, the food seller. <laughs> and, and, and he clipped his neck. Yeah, yeah I remember yeah. that. I was here yeah. for that. Yeah, that happened here in Guangzhou. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to people who don't know the story, uh, the price of rigamian, which is just like peanut sauce and noodles, it's, yeah. it's fucking nothing. It went up like... Half a, uh, it went up like 50 chow. Yeah, half, yeah. A, half a yuan. Half a yuan. So, so that's like 40 cents for the Americans out there. It went up 40 cents and one of the customers was so angry that he decapitated the store owner yeah. and he walked around with his head for a while. But, you know, things like that. <laughs> That's just another day in Guangzhou, yeah. you know. Um, but, but on the same token, though, everybody here feels incredibly safe. Everyone does feel incredibly safe. And it's a strange thing. Are we actually safe? Are we safe anywhere in, in society? Societal constructs are such that it makes you feel safe because people behave the same way that you do. Yeah. Um, and even, even, even though... Uh, uh, Westerners in China are much different to the the local Chinese here. We still we still sort of behave in a similar paradigm with what we expect our similar culture to be behaving. Yeah, yeah. And um, no one breaks it down because we all expect life to be carrying on as normal mm-hmm. tomorrow and next week and next month. And this idea that actually it could change is. At any second. Yeah, it's an, it's an incredibly powerful thing to be thinking about. Cause it is powerful. I, I always sort of half-jokingly say uh, there's always groups of foreigners here, right? And there's always that group who wants to apologize for anything bad going on. There's yeah. always that group who's like, oh, it's getting better. That, yeah, yeah. I always call them the getting better people. No matter what you say about China, oh, it's getting better. Yeah. But like legitimately, today's Wednesday, tomorrow's Thursday, and tomorrow could just be round up and shoot all the foreigners day. Yes. And that, that wouldn't be in the history of, of nations. That wouldn't be strange. Mm-hmm. That would just be like another paragraph in your history book a thousand yeah. years from now. And that Thursday in May, <laughs> all the foreigners were shot. Yeah. <clears throat> and next page. <laughs> but, uh... Well, there's, there's been recent news that two foreigners cannot marry oh, yeah. each other. Yep. Or at least... Um, I think it's two foreigners from two separate countries cannot marry. I, I heard no. I think that's I think that's a, a rumor right. that somebody would ask that question in the group chat. Like, yeah. What about what if they're from the same country? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but of course, uh, those are, uh, like um, Chinese men or Chinese women, you can still come here and marry those. Especially Chinese men. They, yeah. they got a lot of them to spare. They want to get rid of as many of them as possible. Yeah. <laughs> got about twenty million extras. Yeah. I ask my students about that as well. I basically teach conversational classes, yeah. so anything that they want to talk about, anything that kind of ruffles their pajamas gets gets the good conversation out of them, and yeah. so that's what I like doing. <clears throat> and so one of the best ways to do that is to bring up male and female uh, tension yeah. because my classes are like 80% women, right. and, and the Chinese men unfailingly will say something offensive. Yeah, and, and the women just tear them apart. Yeah, because they're so outnumbered. Yeah, and and, and smarter. <laughs> yeah, and so I'll say things about like the birth rate, and then I'll I'll ask the men in the class. I'm like, so you know, the birth rate's going down. You have an aging population. And there's not enough men. Like, should you have more than one wife? You know, things yeah. like this. There, or like, should should women have more than one husband? And should, should your should your wife be like obligated to have five kids? And of course, you know, yeah. <laughs> the women aren't happy about that. Most of the most of the girls in class don't want to ever have kids. Yeah, that one child policy uh, stuff has been too successful. Yeah, they they literally they they've, they've they've felt that there's too much pressure on that one kid, so they'd rather not even play the game at all. And rather yeah. than thinking, oh, actually, too much pressure on one kid, I'll have two kids. No, they realize two kids is too expensive. That yeah, one kid it's, is, it's become a purely purely financial calculation. Financial like, how much does a kid cost? Oh, no, can't afford them. Yeah. Like, you're shopping. Right? I don't, yeah, I don't, want, I don't want one kid because one kid is too much pressure on that one kid. Um, they grow up lonely. They have this uh, miserable life that mm-hmm. I had. So, yeah. let's have a look at two. Spent 20 years studying oh, for the gal cow. Two, I can't afford this. Yeah. So, if, it, if I don't want one and I can't afford two, the only answer is zero. It's amazing how quickly the people's mind changes, you know. Just like two generations ago, people were having a dozen children. Yeah. 
because it didn't cost any money for them. Literally, they it well, didn't. It was also nothing for them to spend money on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know? There was there was there was no uh, added English classes or. Yeah. Uh, Every day you like traded chickens for pigs, and, yeah. and there was nothing else. <laughs> yeah, and literally, the, the the more kids you had, the more fields that you could plow, the more yeah. uh, seeds you could sow, the more. Literally a calculation on that basis. So yeah. If you had twelve strapping boys and one daughter, that you could sell it on to a to another family. Yeah, sell off the daughters. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine if they had the one child policy in the other way, though. If they valued women more than men, if there were twenty million extra women in this yeah. country, it'd be the greatest country on earth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, if like uh, polygamy was the law. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nobody will be alone. Um, something I like to tell my students, I have a theory about World War One. okay? I believe, uh, I don't know if you've gone to the darker areas of YouTube, I assume you have, I assume mm-hmm. everyone in our generation yeah. has. Yeah. It, it, the only difference really is how deep people yeah. go. Yeah, how, how far down the rabbit hole do you go before yeah. you go, get a nosebleed and go, exactly. that's, it, that's yeah. enough internet, I yeah. need some sleep, it's five o'clock. Well, well now my soul is 99% black sludge, <laughs> and I think now it's time to go to bed. Yeah. And dream about these things. Um, I was following the war in Ukraine right. on YouTube for the first like two years of it before I just abandoned it. It got a little too dark for me. And I think that the war in Ukraine will be remembered in history specifically because it was the first time really high quality video technology was available to both sides of the conflict. Yeah. And so when I'm watching on YouTube, I could like ba- a battle would happen yesterday, and then the next day I could watch video footage from both sides of the battle yeah. as it's happening. And like you see some incredible things that like things that are only that they only get put down as like stories in history. I saw one battle where these guys took this like little area of building and there was a field in between the road that they were shooting from. Yeah. And they had helicopters supporting them. And then after the battle, they were crossing the field to get to the area that they just took. And the helicopters went, whipped back around and attacked them, thinking that they were enemies. Fucking, and, and you yeah. see it from both points of view. You see it from the people in the city falling back and, and losing their position. You see it from the people in, uh, crossing the field who are getting shot at by their helicopter. You see it from all points. You see it from the guy a mile away getting the distress call, like trying to call off the helicopter with one yeah. phone and with the other phone getting the message that his people are being killed. It's bananas. But yeah. it gets real dark as well. You start, yeah. you know, the, the last episode I watched, uh, this is going to get pretty gruesome. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry if it upsets you. But the last episode I watched, they, they went up to this tank that had been hit by a missile. And the whole front of the tank was just obliterated. And the the people in the tank had been thrown in all directions. Yeah. And one guy had been shot directly up into the air. And uh, he was missing his arms and legs at the elbows and the knees. from right. They're gone. And there was a power cable going over the street above him. Yeah. And his body was hanging on the power cable. And, the, like, 50% of the tank was just gone. It was just yeah. gone. Like it, like, it was melted by a laser or something. Yeah. Uh, and that was pretty bad. And then in the same episode, they went to a hospital and interviewed a doctor. And the doctor was the i had never seen anybody with such a hopeless look in their eye and it, he's literally he's just getting corpses come in the door that's exactly what he said and he's like there's literally nowhere to put them and yeah. the interviewer was like well what do you mean he's like well this isn't a like a crematorium like this isn't like a cemetery it's a hospital yeah and he took them through the hospital and he's just like hallway after hallway with bodies stacked along the walls yeah. and then he takes them into the basement where they usually store bodies and they had to literally just make piles. Yeah. And there's like a 10 foot high pile of bodies in every room. Yeah. <clears throat> and he's like, there's nowhere to put them. There's no one to dig holes. There's nothing to do. They're just going to lay here and rot. Yeah. And that, that was when I was like, okay, it's time to stop watching these episodes. <laughs> it's time, time to stop watching these videos. Yeah. <clears throat> but my theory is that World War II, World War One specifically, was so gruesome, so beyond imagination, literally beyond imagination. It's, it's impossible to, yeah. to appreciate it. If you could somehow have high resolution video of World War One and and an overwhelming amount of it like we have today on YouTube where you could yeah. spend your entire life watching. And then if you made that a mandatory viewing in high school for all high school students, like when you get to your senior year, you have a new history class that's just like it's called like warfare appreciation. Yeah. And every day you have to sit down for an hour and watch 
you know, fucking 4K video with, with high quality audio of like the song. Yeah. Well, have you, <clears throat> the BBC, uh, they had a TV show called The World of War. Um, and it literally, but it's, <coughs> it's, it's low res. Um, so it, that that already removes a bit of the. A lot of it, yeah. yeah. I, but, I genuinely believe humans just don't have any connection to things that they yeah. read. You have to but, see it and hear yeah. it. But you, you, do, you, you do still feel that. that, that that these were this was actual real life, and you, you get yeah. that here, you get that feel of the history of happening. Mm-hmm. Um, this was real people smiling at the cameras they walk past, going off to war, and then as they come back from from the front line where they're totally just broken. totally broken people, yeah. and you see that haunted look in the eye, mm-hmm. and that comes across. But um, what pre- that is, that's that's incredibly powerful. But that's even with the the, the limited technology I had there. It was. Um, it's filmed in black and white, but it's been artificially coloured, and yeah. you can now do with the technology. So, and there's a limited amount of it, though. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if if you took it to like the Ukraine war status, where fifty yeah, percent of the soldiers have a GoPro on their helmet, yeah. and, and then you just force children to watch it, yeah, force eighteen year olds to watch it for a year every day for an hour, and at the end of the year, I think war would be inconceivable. It would be inconceivable for any of those kids to consider war. To go to war, to be a yeah. soldier, yeah. Or, or like when, because who knows who's going to become a politician, who's going to become a whatever, general. So that, um, would you think that would have a devastating uh, impact on them? Absolutely. And then the kids who become politicians, they couldn't even conceive of, it, of, yeah. of going to war and sending people to war. I also do think that there should be mandatory enlistment for politicians' families. Yeah. If you're a politician, your sons and daughters should be forced to go into the, into the military. Or to be forced to go on the front line when you send someone in. Yeah, yeah. They should have the most dangerous job. <laughs> 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 what if what if the military is such that the most dangerous job is even on the front line? Yeah. You're like you're the guy who like climbs into the gun barrel. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're, you're, you're you're the guy that moves the uranium rods from one part to the yeah, other part. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I, is there any way to make people appreciate horrible things? That's sort of a superpower that humans have is like my ability to tell you something and then you have the experience. Uh, what's that called? Like uh, like a proxy experience? Yeah. But that's not the word. Vicarious. Yeah. You know, I can eat a sandwich and be like, Simon, this sandwich is fucking great. You should go try this restaurant. And I, you tell me what's in the sandwich. Yeah. And now I've already you created know, yeah. a picture of yeah. you how know what those the flavors are. Tastes like, you know what the tomato yeah. tastes like. And I tell you that these are all together. And you go, yeah. okay, I have, a, I have an idea of the experience. Yeah. And then you go and have the experience and it either matches exactly what the person said or you yeah. think, well, actually, I've had better than someone else. Yeah. Because it would have different experiences that they bring into that situation as well. So if I tell you, like... Simon, I went to war and uh, I saw people get their intestines ripped out. I saw people blown to pieces. I saw people, you know, die of all sorts of different horrible diseases. And if it was World War One, I, I mean, people would be yeah. eaten alive by rats. Uh, you read *All Quiet on the Western Front*. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, like, what percentage of people are capable, are like capable of reading the book and imagining it? Like, what percentage of people actually have the imaginative ability to put themselves in the situation? I, I always thought people that are good readers, they're the people that can do that. Mm-hmm. And everyone in this says, oh, I'm barely literate, or I don't read any books. They're the people that can't do that. Well, I'm barely literate, but I feel like I can. Okay. okay. <laughs> with, uh, with the story being read to you, right? Well, I, like, so I can read a book just incredibly slowly. Right. And, and I usually have to read pages over and over again. And, you know, yeah. Couldn't read until I was 15, dyslexic, okay. that kind of thing. Okay. But, but... I think I just take it seriously. Like yeah. when they're describing a battle, in my mind, it's not like a bunch of stick figures running around. Yeah. In my mind, they're like real people. I'm imagining what it smells like, what it sounds like, what it feels like. I'm yeah. imagining the mud and the dirt and the the shrapnel flying all directions, and everyone's lost their hearing because of the explosions. And yeah, well, that, that's yeah. one of the things that I I always wonder how this in, in a, in gets away in a movie. Go into an enclosed space, like storm into a, into a hostage oh, yeah. situation, oh and then God. letting off automatic rifle bullets everywhere. Yeah. And then they have turned to the other person, they talk in normal voice. Yeah, their, their ears would be bleeding, literally. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like the 
they, 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 we know that the guns have not fired any real bullets because they've had a normal conversation afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Even with blanks, I mean, the blanks are yeah, just they, as loud. They're just as loud. It's just missing the bullet, yeah, yeah. the projectile. Um, I've fired high caliber weapons out in like the countryside, yeah, and it's devastating to your ears if you're not wearing your protection. <laughs> yeah, I did, I did the same in Vietnam and. Um, uh, gone to uh, shoot an M16 in uh, in Vietnam, and you walking down to the range with the air protectors above above your head. You literally like come out of the shack where you paid the money to go down there, and you had to put the air protectors on. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, I, I can't imagine. Uh, like the shorter a barrel it that is, it's usually the louder the gun yeah. is. I can't imagine like a sawed off shotgun. Yeah. In indoors, especially in like here, which is like all concrete, just like a little concrete box, or like inside yeah. of a car. I was watching a uh, Barry. You know the show? I think I've downloaded. I haven't watched it yet. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> he's a hitman. Yes, so. I, I know that. I know the basic yeah. premises is a, a low end hitman. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, that uh, then ends up having to go to Hollywood and joins a theater group. I think that's yeah, yeah. That's that's a general storyline. Yeah, yeah. But he, he kills people all over the place. Oh, yeah. But like, um, in that movie, in that show, or in other movies, anytime a gun is fired in an enclosed space, all I can think of is that. The, the pain, the really fucking pain. pain in your head it would yeah. be unbelievable. It's not just pain in your head. You get the hearing, but also you feel the percussion on your chest. Yeah, absolutely. And your breath is literally just poof. Mm-hmm. As, I was, as I was fired, I was, in, in, I was in awe of the power of the thing. Yeah, you know? it was an M16? Yeah. Yeah, that's not even a big caliber either. Yeah, no. Yeah. If, I, if I'd been firing something with, because um, what's that? Uh, uh, M16 is 7? Five, it's 556. Five, 556, five, yeah. 223. Yeah. Two, yeah. And so, like, yeah. uh, uh, AK 47 is 762, yeah. but that's by 39, it has less powder behind it. So yeah. you should fire, like, a World War II Mosin Nagant, and it's 762 by 51. Yeah. And uh, that fucking, it's like a fireball at the end. Right. Fire that at night, and it's like a three foot fireball at the, end of the, <laughs> at the end of the rifle. It's loud as shit. Yeah. And so, yeah. The noise on a World War One battleground, where when they talk about an all quiet and Western Front, where at certain points the artillery was so frequent that yeah. you couldn't distinguish where explosions began and stopped. It was yeah. just one continuous sound. sound. Ah, you know, it's un- literally unimaginable. Yeah, who knows what that sounded like? Yeah, but for sure your death is shit afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Literally, it's not the all quiet on the Western Front. It was literally they just had hearing loss. Yeah, <laughs> all deaf on the Western Front. Yeah, it would, would have been a much yeah. more accurate figure. It wasn't. It was it was meant to be like oh, a bit of a piece of lull was happening. No, it was it was the exact opposite. It was yeah. still high to the battle, but you had just you'd gone gone like snow blindness, but you'd gone deaf. Yeah, it basically everyone has like concussion deafness yeah. immediately. Uh, I like certain things do put things into perspective. So like you can say to somebody. Uh, trench warfare millions of rats everywhere eating yeah. people you know but that doesn't really like sink into most people but when you say things and again this comes from all quiet and western front you say things like well they brought cats and dogs to kill the rats and the rats ate them yeah and now we have in your head a very specific picture of a ratting dog being eaten by rats yeah <laughs> that's how many rats there are. Yeah, like. that's so, how many rats yeah. there are. A ratting dog could take out hundreds of hundreds, hundreds of rats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're fighting. It's bit, literally the White Walkers fighting. Yeah, the, uh, and yeah. It, this is how fighting it should have been. It literally should have just been the same idea. Yeah, yeah. The, none of those people should have survived where they were. Mm-hmm. If they if they were, and I just, I felt that they didn't use the walls. The, the walls of the castle were very thick. And they just, they didn't, they didn't. The whole design of Winterfell upset me because we heard previously in the show that Winterfell was supposed to be a fortress. Yeah. Ned Stark said that you could hold the castle against a million men. Yeah. And it was literally just like one oval wall. Yeah. It's fucking garbage. <laughs> <laughs> the Eerie is meant to protect it. Oh, the Eerie is by far the best protection. Yeah. Or, or one of the islands. Yeah. But I would have liked to have seen the White Walkers walk through the island. Walk through the water. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see no. why they can't. There's absolutely no reason why they can't. Yeah. You know, if they don't breathe, they're dead. Exactly. It's like the land of the dead. Did you see yeah. that? Where they walk through the yeah. water. Then again, wouldn't they probably wouldn't float, right? No, there's no air in their lungs. And they're, yeah. they're literally the bottom weight of the body would just goes down. Yeah. yeah. But uh, bodies do flow unless you puncture the lung. Uh, yes, because yeah. of the air in the lung. Yeah. But normally people panic and they create... Uh, Break the surface tension. And breaking the surface tension means 
Just your buoyancy? Yeah. Yeah. Like the That's bubbles coming off high divers? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, have cavitation. you ever heard? Cavitation. Cavitation, yes. Yeah. You know, it happens when you fire a gun underwater as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, have you ever heard that that's the reason why most people drown when a strip sinks? That's why you have to swim as far away from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the, the bubbles... The, the cavitation thing. drags you down? Yeah. Damn, that's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I heard a great conspiracy the other day that the Titanic wasn't the Titanic. It was yes, actually yeah, the Olympic. Yeah, yeah. Have you uh, heard about this already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard this one as well. I, I heard it was... Um, uh, yeah, it was the Olympic. It was a sister sister ship. But yeah, they, uh, and they, they dolled it up because the yeah. Olympic was having lots of uh, like technical problems, yes. and it was a huge money sink. Yeah. and they took out a huge insurance policy, and then and they yeah. named it the Titanic and yeah. sent it across the ocean. Yes, yeah, I'd heard the same. <laughs> and they made crazy money. They made a, yeah. it was a million dollar insurance policy, yeah. and the video that I watched on it explained that that's ninety million dollars today. Yeah. The rich, they made enough money. And all, and all, again, all the rich people survived. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like uh, all the... Uh, there's so many conspiracies the, where... The, I, the rich floors all had lifeboats. All of the, all of the standard class and the, 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 the steerage class. So what kind of, what level of conspiracy do you accept in, in general? Do you, do, what uh, kind of experience... Like, do you think we went to the moon? Do I think we went to the moon? I think we went to the moon. I don't think we did it in 1959. Do you think think that the aliens came to Area 51? Um, Yeah, I I, I sort of bail out on uh, on aliens at the moment. I feel feel that um, I feel there was nothing we could have offered at any point that would have made them come here. No, I, I would have made them shut up. Oh, okay. They literally would have said, you know, whatever incident information you want me to control is bollocks. We don't give a crap about you. And they would have just been overlords. The aliens? Yeah. Oh, yeah, certainly. So I, yeah. I, 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 I don't... And unless the aliens come in another another form, like they yeah. literally they can't stay in our or, atmosphere. Or if they or, come accidentally, or come if you have like a firefly firefly situation where they have like there's some part on their ship is broken yeah. and like they crash land on it, yeah, and, and they're, then they're not gonna want to hang around. Yeah. Or and and so some some uh, some uh, something I did see was actually the one the the. the Aliens that we see are or have been viewed as these the big eyes and the and the faces. Yeah. They're actually the tra- yeah, they're transdimensional beings. Okay. They don't actually go through space. So this goes apart the thing about the whole thing is massive space and then literally they, they just live in another dimension and they, they can So do you move. support Alex Jones theories with uh, the, the other dimensional beings coming through and using psychedelics to communicate with them? <laughs> uh, I don't know about psychedelics communicating because <laughs> I don't understand how that breaches the the, the the topic. No, it breaches the, the barriers between the uh, between the, the realities. Well, I've never done DMT, but apparently everyone has a very similar experience when they do DMT, that where you get transported to a different place and there's beings made of pure energy in this other place and they're like surprised to see like, what the hell are you doing here? And, right. and then you come back. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's really interesting because I've done a lot of other hallucinogens and on other hallucinogens, you always have a completely different experience than everyone yeah. else. Everyone else has a, everyone has a very unique experience on acid or mushrooms. Yeah. But the idea that everyone has the same experience on uh, DMT is very, very suspicious. Yeah. And DMT is in your brain. It's made by your brain. It's, right. uh, it's one of the first chemicals made when you're in the womb. And a lot of people think that that's the chemical that makes you dream, that you're actually having intense hallucinations when you dream. Right. Nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I think that's probably a good place to end it. Yeah. Uh, thank you for coming on the podcast. Uh, yes, we'd okay. love, love to have you on in the future. It's been, yeah. uh, it's been a pleasure coming over and having a chat. It's Absolutely. Always fun having you talk. I'll let you know when I finally get around to listening to uh, the Game of Thrones books. <laughs> yeah, I do hope that he releases the rest of the story. Uh, oh, there's one other, th- one other thing I wanted to say, actually, is that I hope that when he finishes the books, I don't know if you've ever seen the, the, uh, the anime Full Metal Alchemist, well, they had a similar problem where they started making the anime before the manga was finished. Right. And then once the manga finished, they remade the whole anime to be completely canon. And I hope to do the same thing with Game of Thrones. I actually think that it would be a good anime, Game I, of Thrones. Yeah, I think anime would, would suit this. Because yeah. they can knock it out very quickly. Yeah, and, and I would want it to be like a gritty 90s yeah. anime, animation style, like Akira kind of thing. Mm. Or like Neo Tokyo. I think that would be good for it. 
All right, cool. I hope we see that in the future. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right, thank you for listening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Another episode of podcast or uh, another podcast episode of bullshit and video games. <laughs> <laughs> Special guest Simon, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone, take care. Bye bye. All those good things down below. Subscribe, share, blah blah blah. See you in the next one. Bye bye. Man, I am ain't the man I dreamed I would be. Mountains rise, so rivers turn, friends pass away. Turns of luck, twists of fate, keep burning me. I'll